Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and welcome to my attachment guide for Battlefield Hardline. Now, allow me to start off by saying that I am very sorry to those of you that were expecting a video on gator hunting today. I mean, I know that I promised- A gator? I can show you how to kill a gator! Hold my beer! I'm so awesome, I'm an apex predator. Kobe! Come here, you dinosaur wannabe looking mother- I take it back! I take it back! Shoot this soul! Well then, now that the gator guide is over, in this video, I will be reviewing all of the weapons, statistics, and information of the attachments in Battlefield Hardline. But allow me to make one thing clear before I start. My analysis will focus on the three attachment categories of the accessories, the muzzle attachments, and the grip attachments. I will not be addressing optics because... Although they make your weapon look a little bit different and offer features such as increased zoom magnification, they do not affect the statistics of your weapon. I think it's... Pretty simple to understand, as in, just because you have a 4 times scope on your weapon, it doesn't increase or decrease the spread or have any influence on the actual statistics of the gun. When, when it comes to optics, it's essentially personal preference, and although I always use the Cobra Sight, you are free to use whatever optic tickles your fancy. I will also not be covering the shotgun attachments of the full choke or modified choke, or the sniper rifle attachment of the 338 Magnum ammo. I currently have incomplete information on these attachments, and will be addressing them in upcoming Enforcer and Recon Weapon Guides. Also before I begin, I would like to give a big thanks to the gentleman over at Simthic.com for providing me with all of these datasets and statistics. They are essentially what makes this scientific, because this information is not speculation, it's not guessing, these are values derived straight from the game files, so I know, and they know, that it's perfectly accurate. And without their help, guides like this simply would not exist. So if you'd like to check them out and see all of these statistical tables for yourself, I will leave a link down below. Another Another feature that can be found down below in the description is a table of contents where you can skip around to the various attachments in the guide if you don't want to watch the entire video, which is perfectly understandable. I mean, if I had to listen to myself talk for this long of a video, I'd probably shoot myself in the face with a flare gun. So if you would like to see any particular attachment, feel free to skip around via the description. And one final item that I must address for those of you that are wanting to know, I'll just tell you right now. And I know that you know that I know that you know that you want to know, so allow me to say it to you very clearly. In my opinion, after poring over all of these attachment statistics for a considerable amount of time, as a general rule, I recommend running either the heavy barrel, stubby grip, and stock slash laser, depending on if the weapon offers it, or the muzzle brick, stubby grip, and stock slash laser. Although there are obvious exceptions to this rule, it is my clear recommendation that if you handed me a random weapon and told me to put the very best attachments on it, that's what I would say to you. Diving into the first category of attachments, let's talk about the accessories. The first accessories to address are the Canted RDS and Canted Iron Sight. They are pretty well self-explanatory. I mean, basically, this accessory allows you to have a higher-powered optic on the top of your weapon, such as a 4x scope, with the ability to rapidly switch to a shorter-ranged optic, such as an iron sight or an RDS, if you so choose. That's straightforward enough. The next accessories are the flashlight and tack light, and for those of you that are unaware, there is actually a difference between the two. The flashlight stays on all the time, unless you choose to turn it off manually, yet the tack light only turns on when you aim down sight. While you're running around or firing from the hip, it stays off, so if you're looking to blind somebody while you're aiming down sight and aiming at people, here's the accessory for you. Using the laser sight accessory gives you a 25% decrease in hipfire spread, except there's a 33% decrease in hipfire spread when you are standing and moving. And it is pretty well self-explanatory, you want to be running the laser sight whenever you can, because hip fire is extremely important in hardline. The extended magazine accessory adds 5 extra rounds to your magazine, but decreases the maneuverability of your weapon. Although there is no exact value yet as to how much it affects your maneuverability, keep in mind that when Visceral says maneuverability, they mean spread. So even though we don't have an exact value yet, operate with the understanding that although you're getting 5 extra rounds, you're taking a spread penalty for that added benefit. And that pretty well covers all of the accessories, now on to the muzzle attachments. The muzzle brake results in a 17.5% decrease in vertical recoil, which includes ADS and hip fire, a 50% decrease in horizontal recoil, which includes ADS and hip fire, and a 50% higher rate of spread decrease. 
Yes. Now, allow me to clarify what that last line means, because I know it doesn't sound like English. Let me convert it to English. Spread decrease is the rate at which spread falls from a higher value down to a lower value. The higher the spread decrease, the more rapidly you return to a minimum spread. So what I'm saying to you right now in plain English is that Visceral done goofed. All right, they done goofed. I mean, with the muzzle brake, there is literally no downside to the attachment while all of the others at least have some kind of slight disadvantage. So hopefully someone at Visceral is watching and will learn how statistics work or pretty well everyone will be running this thing forever. The compensator results in a 40% decrease in vertical recoil, that includes ADS and hip fire, a 17% increase in horizontal recoil, that's ADS and hip fire, and a 30% increase in spread per shot, except when standing and moving. So you're gonna wanna run this attachment if you are terrible at managing high vertical kick, despite the fact that I think that 90% of you will never admit it. I also recommend that you learn to tap fire because that spread increase per shot can be very nasty if you are trying to go full auto. The flash hider does absolutely nothing beyond reducing your muzzle flash, but I must say, it actually does a great job at that. Here's the difference in flash between a rifle with a flash hider and a rifle without any muzzle attachments at all. The heavy barrel results in a 20% decrease in all vertical and horizontal recoil, except horizontal hip fire recoil, that stays the same, a 50% decrease in ADS spread while standing still, a 50% increase in minimum spread while moving, that's ADS and hip fire, and a 20% decrease in ADS max spread while standing still. And yet again, like I said earlier, this is an absolute beast of attachment. The overall accuracy benefit that it gives any weapon is incredible. Just keep in mind that it is a terrible idea to constantly shoot while on the move. The heavy barrel can really help your performance in a lot of different ways, but firing on the move is a horrible idea because your spread can go nuts. So stand still when you're pulling the trigger. The suppressor results in a silenced weapon. I mean, that's pretty conspicuous. You don't show up on the minimap when you fire, and although it may lead to decreased muzzle velocity and increased bullet drop, allow me to say this to you very, very clearly. The suppressor does absolutely nothing to the statistical accuracy of the weapon when it comes to spread or recoil. And here's what the suppressor's muzzle flash looks like compared to a rifle without a muzzle attachment. And now that we've covered the muzzle attachments, it's time for the final category, which of course are the grips. Now before I start into the grips, keep in mind that in reality, there are only really three grips in the game, which are the angled, stubby, and vertical grips. So although technically we have what? The angled, folding, stubby, potato, stock, vertical, and ergo grips, most of them are merely reskins. From a statistical standpoint, there are really only three grips in the game. I just wanted to make sure that was perfectly clear. The angled slash folding grip results in a 33% decrease in first shot recoil. And I recommend running this on weapons with recoil that you struggle to control, such as the AKM or some of the Enforcer battle rifles. But I can still tell you that in nearly every situation, the stubby grip is likely a better alternative. The stubby slash potato slash stock grip results in a 50% decrease in max ADS spread while stationary and on the move, a 50% decrease in ADS spread increase per shot while stationary and on the move, and 15% less hip fire spread increase per shot while stationary or on the move. And I, I can easily tell you, unless you've got a really unique situation in Hardline, this is the grip for you. It's such a massive spread reduction, it's not even funny. It is so extremely useful in every conceivable situation, I really can't recommend it enough. And one final note to keep in mind, that I put stock grip in with this attachment. Just so we're clear, the stock is technically an accessory that is only available to a few weapons, but it's purely a reskin of the stubby grip and influences the weapon in the same way statistically. And if I'm not mistaken, there are actually one or two weapons in the game where you can actually run the stubby grip and the stock. I think the HK battle rifle is one of them, but if you can attach both, I recommend doing so. The vertical slash ergo grip results in 50% less minimum spread while moving, that includes hip fire and ADS, and 25% less minimum hip fire spread. 
Nothing else really needs to be said about the vertical grip other than it's what you need if you do some serious running and gunning. Although I would try to persuade you towards the stubby, you can make the vertical grip very useful if you are constantly sprinting around and shooting while shuffling. And that's about it. Those are the attachments that apply to the overwhelming majority of weapons in Hardline, and that's how they work. Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you guys later. Gator? Did you say Gator? <laughs>